we had just finished the CBC annual fishing derby that day. It was a Saturday. And we'd had a few cocktails and so forth. And I wasn't driving, I was in a bus, so it was all perfectly <laughs> above board. And we thought we'd go across to the local saloon to have a few more. And it was, this flash flood occurred, and it was, it was raining so hard, like only a prairie rainstorm can, that the street leading back to the CBC was literally flooded. Right. So there were three of us, and we all looked at each other and said, there's nothing else to do but let's swim for it. So literally, there was about <laughs> this much water on the street, so we were doing a breaststroke up the street. No. And if you've ever done the breaststroke up a street, uh, if you've never done it, you should. Not up because a street, it's, no. It's quite, a, quite an experience. So we like a bunch of drowned rats show up into the newsroom and um, there's one reporter on it, she's going out of her mind because the entire city is flooded. I mean, the subways are flooded, the entire city's a mess. So we made some very, very strong coffee. <laughs> Unfortunately, there was a uh, videotape editor and a cameraman with me and uh, we all started working. And I was on the phones. I had no intention of going on air. I mean, I hadn't shaved in two days and, you know, I was really waterlogged and so forth and my eyes were like this. But I got on the phones working, uh, talking to the police and the fire department and towing companies, basically putting together material for another reporter uh, who was to have come back mm -hmm. to, to use on the air. Uh, but the reporter showed up like 60 seconds before airtime and said, well, I don't know this material. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. So I said, well, I've got the material. So in one, not one of my brighter moves, I pulled the material out and went into the studio. And the anchor at the time, the weekend anchor, just looked horrified as she saw me walk into the studio because literally I, I looked like a drowned rat. <laughs> and sat down and uh, she said, okay, for the latest in the storm, here's Kevin Evans. And so bingo. And I caught sort of a look at me out of the monitor. I thought, oh my Lord, what am I doing? And as I was starting to go over this material, I could see through the window there into the studio, the three buddies who I had been 20 minutes before swimming, swimming. up Young Street with, looking into the studio and they couldn't believe what they were seeing. So it, fortunately, uh, it went smoothly, and uh, we got the information across. But that time, I was very nervous because I realized I was way out of my depth. I shouldn't have been on the air that night. But, way out uh, of your depth, eh? Way out of my depth, <laughs> yes. Pardon the pun. Well, if you're going to be talking about a flood, you know, what better way than to show this is what it's like out well, there? Well, actually, that's how I'm I began. It's so bad. I, something like, uh, excuse my appearance, folks, but boy, it is really <laughs> wet out there. And then I went on to how it's affecting life in Winnipeg that night. But uh, that was a fun night. <laughs> and fortunately, there, th there was no tape of that one either. So. Oh, too bad. Uh, you also, after the CBC Winnipeg uh, news position, you anchored the Weekend National mm -hmm. a couple cool times. of times. Mm -hmm. Now, I hear that there's a sacred chair <laughs> at the National. Well, I don't know how sacred it is, but uh, I walked into the, um, the National studio uh, the first time I was uh, filling in on the weekend. And um, I, I went to sit down in the chair, as one would do if you're anchoring the newscast. And I, I sat down, and I put the microphone on, and one of the... Uh, the studio, uh, I suppose it was a floor director, or one of the stage guys came up and said, you can't sit in that chair. And I said, oh, okay, well, where, where should I sit then? And I said, well, why can't I sit in the chair? And he says, well, because that's Knowlton's chair. Oh, okay, well, I wasn't aware there was a special chair for Knowlton, so I, I said, find me a non Knowlton chair. And so they got me a little stool that I sat on. But they were quite horrified that I would, I would sit in Knowlton's chair. And I told Knowlton Nash, who was the regular anchor of the National, about this the next day, and he got quite a chuckle out of it. So he wasn't aware that he had a throne. So it wasn't his chair that he deemed it to be so. It oh, was I don't just think so. Unwritten rule. I guess so. I, I suppose so. I'm still not quite sure what that was all about, mm -hmm. but it was uh, certainly uh, an interesting eye-opener to network television.